Okay, welcome back to the channel. My name is T Cipher. Uh, this is going to be a, a new video. This is not a direct carry out continuation of the previous video about the SIMPIC construction process, but is actually a fork on that in the fact that I'm carrying out an upgrade to my CNC router and the specific upgrade I'm applying. I've got a work bee and I'm going to apply the uh, Queen Bee upgrade that's available online. Uh, so I've just received the uh, final package uh, and I thought I would just um, show people what you actually get in the kit uh, and then in the future I hope to document uh, the actual process of um, upgrading the work bee uh, specifically I'm actually upgrading a 750 by 750 work bee to a uh, 1000 by 750 work bee with a linear rails the queen bee upgrade is a linear rail and enhanced uh, uh, connection brackets upgrade uh, and I've gone for a one meter wide construction as it works quite nice with the work table I've constructed for which you can see in the image here. So about the packages, they arrive in two separate lots, one from Australia, one from uh, China. Uh, I will say it's taken about a month and a half for the packages, uh, the Australian package to reach me. We are in the middle of COVID at the moment which has caused a merry chaos with normal shipment channels. Um, so actually the uh, Chinese package arrived first. So the way this works, from China they ship to you the linear rails and the linear rail blocks. So this is this long package here. Uh, the package arrived in reasonable good condition, it was slightly beaten up, uh, beaten up and some tears in the external packaging. But I think the metal work is uh, all, all in one piece. I haven't had a proper look at it yet. Uh, and uh, the only thing I did note was that one of these little boxes here, the uh, H15C, which is the uh, HGH bearing block, I found it actually split open and the bearing block itself was uh, running around loose in it. So, as you can see, the boxes aren't necessarily held together the best way. So this is the HGH uh, bearing block, so this is going to go on the, the heavier rail. Uh, there are, let me count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them in the pack so that's two on a rail so you've got four rails that you actually upgrade um, two on the uh, move along the x-axis and, and one each on the ends of the y-axis so along with those 15 box let me get them out oh, that's 15 I lied, 16 those 16 blocks we also get the MGM bearing blocks. Now these are actually supplied in quite a cool way. I thought it was quite amusing when I saw them. They are, they, they, they are distinctly smaller. You, you, you place them side by side. And you can see that that's a... The, the HGH block is a lot more beefy block, a lot more robust. Now these little ones here, they're going to go on our Z-axis. Uh, and I thought they were just quite cool how they'd been packed. Uh, uh, in, it's sealed into this bubble wrapped material. And yeah, look, they all look good. Uh, one thing to note, um, these big ones actually do appear to have some sort of grease nipple with them. Um, I'm not quite sure how practical those are yet. Uh, I'm sure we'll work that out as we go along. So, yep, we've got these little MGM blocks. And then we get the actual rails themselves. So what you all will receive is this pack of two... Uh, MGN uh, or MGM 15 rails at 245 millimeters in length. These are going on our z-axis uh, and they're five millimeters shorter than the 250 millimeter z-axis. This I assume is just to ensure that the there's no interference between the end plates and the uh, rail. Um, makes sense in all honesty. Uh, and uh, if you look on the website where you buy this kit, this requires I believe M3 by 12 uh, cap head screws and the quantity is on the website. Uh, when I ordered this uh, package, the, they were still developing the kit list for it, so uh, some of the part screws I need aren't actually here at the moment, uh, but I'll explain that in a minute. So we get two of those rails, then we get the larger rails. So this is uh, one of the large rails, it won't be all an image because it's bloody big. And I believe that's the one meter. And then if I get one of the smaller ones out here, that's the 750, or you saw in the picture anyway. Um, 
Yeah. Okay, so just moving forward, um, I should have mentioned the rails themselves were actually well wrapped up with some uh, foam, um, so that they're unlikely to take any damage. I, until I come to actually make it, I can't do a more detailed inspection. Um, and also the screws for the uh, the HGH rails, uh, they are a uh, 14 millimeter M4 cap head, 14 millimeter. They're slightly more awkward to get a hold of. I've got uh, them on order. They should be arriving with me. Well, they should have arrived yesterday, but uh, with present uh, the present situation, Royal Fail has uh, succeeded in not reaching their targets again. So. Next box I'm going to look at is the box from Australia. So this one, I've, I've literally only just cut open the box. So what we're going to do, we're going to have to look at what's inside here. And this is actually probably the more interesting box I'd imagine. So, yeah. we get some nice labels uh, from uh, CNC 3D. These are the provider of the product and a card saying thank you for your order. Lovely. And we've got one two bubble wrap packages. So move those into image. Okay, so these should contain the bits they're supplying. So if I find my slitty opening-y thingy bobby, technical term there, of course. So what I'm expecting to find in here, not in package-wise, is I'm expecting to find all the uh, linear other plates for the mounting of this part up along with some shims, an Acme screw block, and uh, some uh, connectors to help for mounting on the uh, con uh, stop sensors, sensors uh, end, sw end switches. So if I open this package up, what have we got here? We've got, these look like tiny little shims, uh, look to be about 0.75 millimeters, maybe half a mil thick. Uh, we have Acme screw block, so if you've already got the um, work bee, you'd have already seen this block. This is used in the Z-axis. Uh, we're now going to employ it in both the Z-axis and the X-axis, I believe. And then we've got one, two, three 3D printed shaped pieces, which um, I'd assume are the, these are going to be for the end stops. Uh, I'm guessing this one here is going to be the end stop for the... Uh, Z axis, and I guess these two, well, they look the same, so I'm guessing those are going to be the end stops for the X and Y axis. Uh, I'm sure we'll work this out. Um, according to the 3D print, I have no idea, I've never actually done one myself. It seems a bit straggly in places and things like that, but I, I'm sure it'll do the pot job. Um, yeah, maybe it could have been a bit cleaner, a little bit nicer, but it, as long as it's functional, really, that's all that really matters, isn't it? So that's that little package there, and I'm gonna to have to be really careful that none of these packages go astray, cause that's the last thing I want. So I'm just gonna put this aside. Now this one's the one that we probably all really wanna see. This is the actual Anmium blocks that have been machined uh, for the uh, Queen Bean. So let me find a place where I can do slitty slit. Oh, that's just tape. Yeah, you can obviously tell I've not opened this package up before because yeah, I literally just opened the box when I picked up on the sort of earlier today. And I've never done a video like this before, so my hands are probably all over the place in the wrong way. Ugh. I would say these are well wrapped. Um, there are big lumps of alley, so LA is reasonably tough, but reasonably tough as a compared to plastic. Against steel and things like these, aluminium will take damage, it will take things and such like, so it's good it's been well wrapped up with um, some bubble wrap for transportation because we all know how these partial services ship things around the world. Okay, so we've got the first bits making an appearance. So 
These look like the bits for the uh, Z-axis. Um, so front plate, I believe it mounts something like this. And then uh, you have the uh, bearing blocks on them. So yeah, machining quality looks good in all honesty. We've got some nice emblems machined up here. I will say I've tried uh, machining aluminium in my work B end. Although it can do it, uh, you have to be really careful on the work hold there. Um, your speeds and feeds and, uh, and your work holding but this looks reasonably good um, can't feel any burrs which is a result looking through the holes there's I can see small little slithers here and there but nothing to worry about I've got a compressed air gun so I'll use that to blast a bit I can see a bit of swath just there so that's okay this one again it's not analyzed or anything, it's literally machine finish. Not, uh, it's not as pretty as maybe uh, the original parts, but it, it's functional and that's really what you want, isn't it? So that's the, uh, I believe the two parts for the Z-axis. Or maybe that's the YZ interface, or should I say. And then we have the larger part for the um, Y-axis. Um, Again, machine quality is reasonably good. There's a few scratches here and there, but these are what I call cosmetic issues. Uh, actually, you can. There's a definite feel of a tramming issue when they've uh, machined it. The tramming's obviously been not perfect, but I believe they machine these on their updated version of this machine. Actually, I believe uh, the uh, the Night Hawk is what they're machining these off now. I'm guessing, uh, but yeah, it's uh, not bad. Again, we've got some nicely engraved um, icons there. Something they don't actually need to do. Uh, it, it brings no uh, uh, improvement to the performance of it, and it risks damaging uh, machine parts, etc. But it's pretty, and yeah, like I said, so so generally good finish. Backside, that's that's a lot smoother. This it's quite interesting actually. You can feeling that this doesn't. Compared to this side, you can actually really feel a slight issue with the tramming here compared to this side here. I don't know if they've used different machine for different parts. They might well be doing the process on two different machines now just to uh, increase workflow. There are a few scratches, but like I said, cosmetic. Let's have a look at the other one. Okay, again tramming feels a lot better on that side. You can definitely feel there is something, but it's, yeah, it's marginal. This side, now that's interesting. The actual machine path, comparing the two sides, is distinctly different. This one's been just done, done a facing operation in this profile here, up and down. This one here, it looks like they've done a, um, rectangular pattern, I don't, I don't know the technical names, uh, and this then, I'd say, has been machined with the same trammed machine as did the back side of it, just feeling it, you can feel quite distinctly, compared to this one, that this one's trammed a lot better. But like I said, it's, the tramming doesn't matter, it's, it's, it's a cosmetic thing, it doesn't look perfect, but as a functional upgrade, the tramming shouldn't really cause any issue. Uh, it might lead to some slight imperfections on the whole drill points, but I'd imagine they're using, they're not actually um, boring their holes, but more likely using drill bits of the correct size so they should just punch through or maybe even ream them. Um, I can't really comment too much about the holes really because until I get a um, some screws in there, I can't tell if they're. The, how close a fit they are. The the fitting on the normal work bee is quite a tight fit. This might be a slightly looser fit, but we will see. But yeah, um, generally again, we've got the iconic icons on here, which is cool. Uh, interesting. Yeah. So yeah, I think this looks good. So yeah, that's all our parts. Um, I will double check the, the, the what should have been packed. I think that seems to be all I remember. That's many packed in this kit. So uh, 
next video, um, it, it's sod law. I, I ordered this kit thinking, hooray, I've got a, a, a month off work effectively due to furlough. Well, just hurrah, joking about that hooray thing, but I thought this would be something for me to do while I'm uh, awaiting to return to work properly and still doing a bit of engineering. Um, Fortunately, I'm actually due to go back to work next Wednesday, so I've got two days to try and uh, produce, uh, get this manufactured. And uh, like I've said, I'm still awaiting uh, some of the key screws I need, uh, which is a bit of a shame, but uh, I will make a start on assembling this uh, next week, and hopefully I'll get it all assembled next week. The parts should, the screws shouldn't be too far behind. Uh, and I can uh, talk you through some of the steps I've done. Um, I've done some pre-preparation in that I've actually already pre-machined some fancy little blocks to help me align the rails and such like uh, and I'll show you how I intend to use those in a future video. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you found it informative and I hope it gives you, if you're looking at doing the Queen Bee upgrade, it gives you some idea of what to expect when the parts arrive uh, and uh, if you want to like and subscribe please do, feel free. Uh, as I said I, I am intending to continue this little video series on the construction of the Queen Bee um, and the Queen Bee upgrade. Uh, but that's it for now and uh, see you next time.